Hello and welcome to another video and podcast from Fantasy Football Scout as we look ahead to festive game week 20. My name is Joe and I'm joined by Mark aka the FPL General for a very special edition of General's Orders. Mark, how are you and why is game week 20 special for you? Yeah, I'm good, Joe. Good to be back doing another video. I hope you had a nice Christmas mm -hmm. and I yes, hope all the viewers and listeners did as well. It's a yeah, big game week this week. As viewers will know, I've been holding on to this wild card forever and ever, and I'm finally forced to press the button. It has been pressed, so very much had a you know a lovely family Christmas. Mm -hmm. Didn't really give APL too much thought over that period. Brought in Allison with my last free transfer to kind of go against the Trent mm -hmm. backers, which which did okay. And now it's very much get the juices flowing for wildcard for the next couple of days. So been really looking forward to this video because like I said, I've kind of switched it off for a few days mm -hmm. and it's very much back into it today with us. Yeah, indeed. I mean, for me, I mean, I use my wildcard way back, game week eight or so. And um, it actually got me thinking because sometimes it's quite a good exercise to what would you do if you were to wildcard. And so it's got me thinking about the players I would get in. And obviously I've only got transfers to do it, but it, it just it's quite helpful with sort of the, the sort of team I want to move to. Um, and so, so your team will definitely give me some ideas. Um, before we um, move on, um, I just wanted to uh, say, uh, do remember to press that like button and do remember to subscribe so you can keep up to date with our latest videos and podcasts. Also, um, check out fantasyfootballscout.co.uk. So there's a offer there with the members area. So a lot, we're going to have some stats up on screen um, as we talk as well. They're all being constructed by the members area. So you can go in there, you can have a look yourself. You can make your own tables, use the comparison tool and rate my team and all of those types of fun things. OK, um, I was going to say, look at the season ticket, but I've, I've actually look at your team so far, actually. I've got up on screen now. Um, so we're in the middle of a game week. It's, it's largely irrelevant at the moment what you've got this week because we, we're in this sort of middle of game week 19 plenty more fixtures to go um and as you said your your team you got you got Allison in um so got you a nice clean sheet there in goal um do you want to just run through your team quickly or I can I can do if it's not handy on your screen at the moment but you've got you've got 22 points at the moment yeah I've got it here I can run through okay. it for the audio listeners as well so brought in Allison this week mm -hmm. for Johnston Obviously, a lot of people were moving towards Trent, so it was just a bit of an insurance policy before I could actually get to Trent myself on the wild card. I didn't have any cash to get from Shimakis to Trent, for example, like a lot of people did. So it was kind of between Dubravka and Allison, and thankfully got the choice right there. Defender still to play Pedro Poro and Gabriel, Trippier and Gordon Blanks, the Newcastle guys, and both are probably not going to survive the wild card. Captain Salah Blanked again, Sack and Son still to play. So, uh, Watkins didn't do anything against Manchester United. Mm -hmm. Solanke got his customary goal, yeah. and Alvarez is yet to play mm -hmm. against Everton. And Gusto was the only player on the bench, so hopefully all eleven players do okay. play. So it's you know not many points there, no. but it's a low scoring game week so far. So it no is. issues really. It is, yeah. It's uh, we got up on the screen as well. It said you got twenty two points, but of course the av the average this week across the board is fourteen. Um, and I think 22 is, is pretty much either on par or uh, just slightly above what that the so-called sort of elite um, group are doing. Um, and that's uh, that's from live FPL, if you want to have a look at that. Um, they've got a sort of an elite FPL managers. And what's that's picked, that's, that's basically based on, um, you know, their career history over the last decade or so um, and how we compare as mere mortals to these people um, there. But maybe maybe you and I are in that list. I don't know. It depends whether we I'm consider sure we are. ourselves I'm sure we are. every now and again. I know. Um, I think back to six, seven years ago when I was putting mm. the Elite 64 leagues together. I'm pretty sure you're one of the first names in there. And, and one of the few who are still in there without still. having dropped out. So uh, that's I, impressive. I, I almost, I, do you know what? It was a couple of years, it was a couple of seasons ago. <clears throat> I was, I was one, I think it was one place out. I think, I think the top 50 survive each week and yeah. 14 leave. And I think I was something like, 49th or 50th <laughs> it was skin just of a about team. To skin of, I think it was like a point in um okay so there's your team up on the screen there and you've just read that out so let's have a look at that so before we come to your, your wildcard team I'm just going to put the season ticker in because this is quite a good exercise to do in terms of this, the sort of players that you want in the media future but also looking from game week 20 up to 26 we're taking in the possibility of double game weeks for Man City and Brentford and Bournemouth and Luton, they're the ones with a game in hand. Plus, game week 26 is uh, League Cup final week. So it could be, for example, Liverpool against Luton. 
could be cancelled um, then. And um, I can't remember who else is even in the league, uh, the League Cup at the moment. But yeah, it's it. We need to sort of keep an eye on potential blanks there. Um, overall, though, this says that Brighton, Aston Villa, Manchester United, Manchester City, Crystal Palace, and Tottenham have the best fixtures over this run. Bournemouth, Newcastle, Burnley, Nottingham Forest and Brentford have the worst overall. But in amongst them, they have some good fixtures um, in amongst that run. So looking at this um, this general season ticker, what what thoughts does this give you about your wildcard? Who who do you think you need to get sort of coverage and, uh, and players from? Yeah, the season ticker is always one of the first places I go where it's always open in the background when, when it's wildcard week. Uh, and I do like this horizon of about six, seven, eight game weeks. I don't tend to look too much further ahead. And because, I, because I've because i kind of been pretty set on, on, on late wildcard and I haven't been keeping a close eye on you know possible blanks and, and doubles as much as I maybe would previously. And I still think they're probably, given that they're unknown at the moment, and you know we're, you're talking about maybe around game week 26 for a couple of blanks. They're, they're probably just about far enough away that they're not going to influence my decisions okay. too much with yep. this with this wild card squad. It's probably one of those where I just deal with that when we have the information with with the free transfer. So I'm probably not going to let that influence me too much. Okay. Straight away, looking at the ticker at the bottom, first of all, uh, Bournemouth are down there. So Solanke came in for three game weeks. And it was always a plan of three game weeks before the wild card and then reassess it. Mm-hmm. So when you look at Tottenham and Liverpool coming up next, maybe there's a an opportunity maybe to take the points and run and, and maybe move to a 3-5-2. Mm-hmm. I've been in 3-4-3 for, for most of the season, but there's still a lot of midfielders that I like. So Solanke might end up dropping out okay. for an extra midfielder. Mm-hmm. Newcastle are down at the bottom as well with Liverpool and Man City next. I've been on Trippier and Gordon. And I don't think either player will survive because of the short term fixtures and also the downturn in form at Newcastle as well. So then you're 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 back towards the top then when you're thinking about replacements. So Brighton obviously kind of avoided them a lot. Mm. Uh, well most people did. I know we had Mr. Adingra for, for quite a while. Yeah. But they're back on the menu now. Players mm-hmm. like Pascal Gross, mm-hmm. you know, Stupinen, who we will talk about later, are, are certainly very interesting. Villa are just having such a good season. So Watkins is probably going to survive. But then it's a question of how many more Villa assets do I add? So, you know, Luca Dean went off injured, so that opens the door for Moreno possibly. Uh, and I'm a big big fan of Douglas Louise this season. I know Bailey's maybe the more exciting, more popular mm-hmm. pick at the moment, but Douglas Louise is my yeah. kind of player. Ticks along, roots to points, plug him in and just leave him there long term. Uh, yeah, a couple of other teams there, obviously. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. No, I was going to say, Doug, Douglas Louise, he very much that sort of analytics FC pick in the no 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 humans do but if you just think in numbers so if you switch off the human part of your brain and go numbers you think okay he's on penalties he's always getting uh, returns at home these home fixtures in particular and you just sort of get him in and just ignore the sort of emotion side of it so yeah he's a yeah and he's extremely cheap you know i kind of i kind of view him almost as a possible gordon replacement mm. gordon goes on the wild card douglas louise comes in and again roots to points good team mm. Good fixtures near the top of the ticker. It, it seems I think there's a good chance he might he might come into my team, mm. although he's probably not in the in the first draft. Elsewhere there, obviously big decision on Erling Haaland. Hopefully, wild carders this week will have more information mm. by the time you know Friday Saturday comes around. Manchester United are third on the on the scout fixture ticker as well, and you know Garnacho at four point seven, mm. very impressive performance midweek. Certainly put his hand up for inclusion as the fifth midfielder. Um, he's probably the only one that interests me there. You know, Hoyland was on the score sheet, but hasn't done enough so far this season for me. So Garnacho's in the picture with City having Sheffield United next as well. It's not just short term, but obviously they're they're one of the best teams in the league. So it's if Haaland comes back in, do you add a second attacker as well? Do you gamble on a defender? Probably not. But players like Foden, you know, Kevin De Bruyne is nearing a return as well. So wildcarders, I think, have a lot of choice this week. Um, yeah. But we also need a bit more information, hopefully over the next couple of days on certain players. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, I always I think of the period win at the moment is a fixture block, 18, 19, 20. That's your fixture block, your festive fixtures. So lots going on in people's lives, Christmas and all that kind of stuff. And so you've got other challenges to deal with, trying to make transfers while you've got a sort of, spend time with your family <laughs> things like that as well just just, just the, the basics of navigating it if people drink as well or, or overeat you've got to sort of make those changes do you make a transfer um at drunk <laughs> at 10 o'clock at night um or do you think <clears throat> no i'm just going to leave that 
So you've got all those sorts of challenges. It's a distinct time. And then Game Week 21 onwards, you've got this sort of January <clears throat> time. You've got this um, the fixtures there. You've got players at the Asia Cup, AFCON. You've got that challenge to meet as well. You've suddenly got lots of money. Salah won't be around. Lots of money floating around. But how do you get Salah back? When do you get Salah back? Game Week 25, 26, 24, he could be back. At some point around then, he could blank in 26. So that's I, I see that sort of game week 24, 25, 26 as a distinct um, block as well, where you've got the blanks, possible doubles, and and you've got the return of those those cut players. Um, so yeah, you've got this sort of three blocks coming up, and um, yeah, it's 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 a lot to it's a lot to deal with definitely. Yeah, and it's it's almost um, it's quite tricky having to wildcard in twenty when the cup guys aren't away until 21 because you've got very good assets like Salah and Son and you've got to ask yourself, you know, do I keep both? Do I keep one? Do I mm. straight away get rid of both mm. so that I can use my transfers elsewhere when others maybe are selling them? So that's something we'll talk about when when we look at my my okay. first draft. But there's there's certainly difficult decisions to be made around players like Son and Salah in terms of do you keep one and book in a transfer and stuff like that. So that's that's probably going to be the hardest part of, of the wildcard. Okay, well, I mean, let's put your wildcard up then. Um, but let's see if uh, if which of Salah, Son, Haaland, which of those are in and um, what some of those other choices you've made based on those fixtures. So here's the wildcard. Do you want to just sort of run through it quickly and then we'll go position by position. So then we'll move back to the goalkeepers and we'll keep it going through that through the positions. But if you just sort of read it out, mainly for the benefit of our podcast listeners. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so first of all, I think roughly 0 0.9 million in the bank. I okay. think with this is this is very much draft number one because I really want to kind of let Wednesday and Thursday night games play out before I really, you know, deep dive into the tinker because we know how quickly things can change in FPL. So draft number one, Pickford and Dubravka because I have no idea which goalkeeper I'm going to end up on. So that's, again, mm -hmm. going to be one of the trickiest positions. Defence at the moment, Gabriel stays, Horo stays, Trent comes in, mm -hmm. Gusto stays as a fifth defender, and Konsa comes in okay. from Aston Villa. Saka stays, Palmer stays, Odegaard comes in, Richarlison comes in, and Bowen comes back in. So no Salah and no Son in draft mm -hmm. number one. Okay. And up front, Watkins remains... Chris Wood comes in as a 4.9 enabler mm. for the bench and Haaland comes back in if we get positive news this week. So that's okay. that's the starting point okay. for the tinker in this week. OK, well, I mean, just before we go, I'll leap back to goalkeepers in a sec, but just a sort of a, a sort of overarching point here. Um, okay, so game week 20, Salah and Son are still around. They're still playing. Not only are they still playing, but um, Liverpool face a quite a, a poor Newcastle team away from home um and uh, well and judging by their their display against Nottingham Forest not so good at home at the moment either um so so Salah has arguably a, a great fixture there Son also has a good fixture Bournemouth at home um there so you've got Alexander Arnold in and Richarlison and Porro um g given Salah and Son will be captains as well do, I mean do you think it's enough to have those players in instead of the best captains for that week. It doesn't feel like enough to me. Mm. Um, and it's not, I would be very uncomfortable going into game week 20, just losing Salah and, and Son because mm. I'm wildcarding. And, yeah. and I don't think you need to lose both players uh, initially. So I think there's every chance one of them will survive. Okay. I don't see me keeping both because then you're kind of booking in two transfers yeah. kind of straight away. Okay. So my initial thoughts were, you know, a couple of weeks ago, more than happy to lose Salah because it's Newcastle. Mm. But as you mentioned, Newcastle have kind of made it a, a lot more difficult now to lose Salah because yeah. they have they haven't been playing great. You know, it's, that was a very worrying result against Nottingham Forest at home. Uh, and Liverpool have been obviously ticking along very nicely all season. I know Salah just blanked, but yeah. that doesn't change my thinking at all. I'd still, in an ideal world, have him for the Newcastle game. But I think my early thoughts are, I know neither player is in this first draft, um, but I haven't sold them yet. This is no. just you know messing around on the transfers page. Jungman son at home to Bournemouth. I think I'm a lot more likely to keep him. Okay. Um, and and you know budget comes into it. It's mm. you know to get Haaland back if he's fit. Easier to squeeze him in with with Salah not there, and if I'm not going to captain Salah anyway against against Newcastle, and I don't think he'll be 
massively captained if Haaland's fit mm. and Son has a good yeah. fixture as well. So I think I can, I'm willing to go without Salah. That's okay. been the plan all along. Um, but I think there's a good chance Son might come back in and or, or stay, sorry. And, and that would just mean Odegaard would go back out again. Okay. And you're maybe booking that transfer in for the week after. So yeah. Son to Odegaard possibly give me okay. 21. And then okay. Richarlison's already in place. Yeah. So that's the thinking there. I think I'll I think I'll probably end up with with Son for, for give me 20. Yeah, I mean, I I would probably do a similar thing if I was in your position as well. A lot, a lot last season, towards the end of the season, I went without Salah, um, and it's that that sort of fit. There's that fear of missing out, and I don't tend to have it too much with those types of players. If you make that decision, you just go for it. And a lot of people have been without Haaland, or they've been without Salah for periods of this season already. So it's not it's not as fearful, especially if you've got Alexander Arnold. I think you'll match those points. So I mean my fear of missing out this week was Alexander Arnold. Um and I was really worried. I was I'm booking in a red arrow basically. Um but weirdly the player I got in instead for um Simicast was was Alfie Doughty who scored his first <laughs> Premier League goal. Um so you know won the lottery on that one. Um, what a sign in the what a sign in that was. But, but that but that that saving, but I can't I can't rely on Alfie Doughty every week. Um but with Alexander Arnold, you can rely on him to match Salah. And I think that's the point I want to make there is that Alexander Arnold is arguably even a better player than Salah. Alfie Doughty's not a better player than Alexander Arnold. So and in FPL terms. So I think you're right there. And, and that's an easy switch. Because you, you say you're booking in a transfer, everyone who's got Son is booking in a transfer because he's gonna be off for four four weeks or so. Um yeah. And and you're not booking it in specifically for Ode- you want Odegaard, but say Odegaard gets injured, well you've got nine million, ten million. You can yeah, get any yeah. midfield you want, really. Um, but we'll come to midfielders in a sec. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make that point really because I think a lot of people who aren't wildcard in watching this will be thinking, well, I've got Salah, but I don't have Haaland. What do I do? I've got Haaland, but I've got, you know, I don't think there's going to be a lot of teams with Son, Haaland, and 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 Salah anyway. Because a lot of people have ditched Haaland already. Um, and he may not even be back. So lots lots up in the air. Um, yeah, we really need, we, Wild Carters, we really need that information on, on yeah. Haaland. So it's good there is a City game to come. So hopefully okay. that will help. Okay. Let's move back to goalkeepers. So you have decided Pickford and Dubravka. Um, why Pickford and why Dubravka? Basically, they're just placeholders for now. It was a case of who are the cheapest that are decent options. So a lot of people have been on Dubravka for a few weeks. Um, I don't think he's someone you can rely on as your only goalkeeper as, you know, Newcastle could sign someone in January. So I certainly won't be going for Dubravka and, you know, a 3.9 million dud. Although we do have Turner, you know, for how long is the question there. But as has been well documented this season, the goalkeeper position is very, very tricky. You know, there's been Areola. I had Johnson for a long stretch, which kind of tailed off very poorly towards the end. I treated myself to a, you know, a one week fling with a premium goalkeeper. Yeah. And probably the worst thing that could have happened was he got a clean sheet because it makes me think, Oh, could I, could I, could I make this a long-term strategy? Could I go for a more expensive goalkeeper? And like I said earlier, I think, I think it probably will be the trickiest call. One of the okay. trickiest calls on the wild card is, okay. is where to settle on and pick for the 4.4, you know, I was keeping a wee eye on the price change website. He could go back up to 4.5 soon. So that was the reason I just put him in at 4.4, just in case I end up wanting him come Friday or Saturday and I didn't want to miss that price race okay well I've got I did a bit of a table on goalkeepers and there's only a few names on it and there's lot obviously lots of other goalkeepers and there's lots of other goalkeepers that could be good and fit you fit the bill of being sort of cheap as well um but I filtered this by having a save this is for the whole season by the way um especially for those listening on the podcast I filtered it by a save every 30 minutes so they're making at least three saves a match on average so that's a point that's why I think that's important. So they can get that point. Um, and I've also sorted it by a plus in the expected goals prevented, which means they're actively preventing goals. So if they're minus, I've filtered them out. So there were a few like that, like Leno, for example, who I do think is a good goalkeeper. He's certainly getting the the saves, but he's not, not hitting the sort of actually actively preventing points. There. And I've also filtered it um, by minutes per save and, and the cutoff is 30 minutes there so um that that's just another way of, of of showing that they're making a save every sort of 25 28 minutes 30 minutes and so you're getting getting that's that chance to save points i've also got goals conceded as well and clean sheets i filtered it you've got to have at least four clean sheets to be in this list and is after all of that 
Only one, two, three, four, five keepers made it. Got Vicario at Tottenham, 5.3 million though. Anana at Manchester United is probably, I think, I think there's a small chance he won't be going to AFCON, but I'm pretty certain he is going to AFCON. Um, Neto at Bournemouth is 4.6. Allison is 5.6, who you treated yourself to, who's in this list. He's ticking all the boxes. And Martinez at Villa, 5.2. So you've got cost issues. I think if you want quality, you've got to pay for it. Um, but Neto's fixtures, annoyingly, Bournemouth's fixtures, as you highlighted, Bournemouth's fixtures aren't good <laughs> over the coming game weeks. So that's a tricky one there. Um, does I, I don't know if this makes you change your mind at all, but if I was wildcarding now, I think I would go for Martinez, where I've highlighted him. I don't think 5.2 is too much more. And he's Villa. And you've got Consa at the moment in your team. And I think Martinez is better than Consa. Yeah, so I think I think this table you've put together kind of it sums up my thoughts on on goalkeepers this season, and I'm sure most people. It's the, these are you know there's a case to be made that these are some of the better goalkeepers, mm. but I still don't get excited by any of them. <laughs> um, Onana straight away, possibly not available because of Afcon, so yeah. that kind of rules him out for now. Mm. Uh, Neto, as you said, bottom of the fixture ticker, no thanks. Although if you're picking a long term goalkeeper. Maybe we shouldn't read too much into that. Yeah. You know, being bottom for the next six, seven game mm-hmm. weeks. Allison, when I think of teams like Liverpool with Allison and Vicario mm-hmm. at Tottenham, I always straight away think I might want three outfield players yeah. from those teams. You know, Poro, Son, Richarlison, you know, Salah, Trent, Darwin later in the season. Who knows? He might he might mm-hmm. turn the corner. Um and I, I I think if I was to highlight one of these as well, it probably would have been Martinez. Yeah. Um we we mentioned Villa, good fixtures, very good goalkeeper. Um, but again, I, I just think I can get a concert for cheaper or possibly Alex Moreno. Although Moreno, I think is only zero point two cheaper. He has five yeah. million. Yeah. But again, I'm thinking attacking threats. But but I do I do agree with you. Maybe Martinez is a better pick than mm-hmm. Conza and Moreno. So if if I was if I had a you know gone to my head, Mark, mm-hmm. pick one of these goalkeepers for your wild card. So I think it would be Martinez. Okay. But then I look at 5.2 and I think, right, I'm going to want to get Salah and Son back later. I'm probably going to need all the pennies that I can gather at that point. Yeah. So that's why I'll probably end up going for a you know, 4.4, four, 4.5, four, maybe a 4.6. Okay. I'm not going to rule Neto out. I'll, no. I'll, I'll maybe look at the longer term fixture. So the, 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 the long and short here is it's tricky. It really is tricky. And I think it's it's almost impossible to get the goalkeeper right you know, no. on the wild card. Um, there's a few um, rotations. Now, I'm just checking quickly on the season ticket here because I, I highlighted at the beginning of the season a really good rotation of being Leno and Ariola, And Ariola is cheap. Um, and so it's relatively Leno. Um, I didn't quite make my list, but it's still a very good goalkeeper there. So looking at Fulham, so they've got Arsenal um, next and uh, West Ham have Brighton. So I think, you know, Ariola can, can be played then. Um, I don't think we'll get a clean sheet, but he certainly might get get the save points there. And then Fulham have Chelsea. And then um, looking down the list, yeah, West Ham have got Sheffield United. So you can rotate then. And then and then Fulham have this really nice run of Ever- Everton, Burnley, Bournemouth and Aston Villa. Although Aston Villa, I think they would concede in there. Um, so, I mean, it's not, it's not wholly good. Although Nottingham Forest, uh, West Ham's... Um, opponent when Fulham play Villa in game week 25 for example so it's not I mean it's not it's not terrible but it's quite good it's okay still I think and that that is a bargain uh, I also I, I've weirdly found myself by getting Alfie Doughty in because I've still got Anderson in my team and I and I just haven't yet got around to getting rid of him so I've basically got someone who's going to rotate with Anderson but you can have the same in goal you could have uh, Luton have got a double game week coming up. We all know what goalkeepers do in double game weeks. Um, so you could you could rotate Luton's and um, Crystal Palace's goalkeepers. Um, I guess the problem there is Johnston um, there. Um, I mean, he's been in your team for a while, um, but could, you know Henderson might retain his place maybe. Um, Johnston, I think, is back soon. Yeah, it's again, it's another, it's another option. But I, I feel like when I've... I was on Johnston game week one, um, mm. did well for a while, got the T-shirt, yeah. but don't wear the T-shirt anymore after all the okay. the blanks recently. So I, I just, 
I don't really rate Crystal Palace too highly defensively. Mm. I do I do think uh, Kaminsky and goal at Luton has been very, very good this season. Yeah. Uh, you know, makes a lot of saves and they've they've definitely improved in recent game weeks as well. So it's it's another option to throw out there. You know, players we didn't speak about either, you know, Ederson. Do you just yeah. go for an Ederson? I know the clean sheets haven't been there. Mm but the underlying numbers are there. Yep. And then you've got David Raya at Arsenal as well. But I feel like when I've got Gabriel, I don't really need to go for a David Raya. And I also don't like that he does have a good goalkeeper breathing down his neck as well. So I yep. probably will just swear of that one. So I could I could end up on anyone in goal at this stage. It's uh, it's very, very tricky. And, and I mean, Arsenal's good defence is sort of Raya's undoing. He's not getting the saves because the defenders are not getting the shots in. Liverpool's in comparison, relatively weaker defence. Even though they've got six clean sheets, Alisson is a great goalkeeper who has kept them. He's XG prevented. He's actively preventing goals. So when their defence slip up, which they have done, Alisson is there getting those save points as well. So yeah, it, that's what that, it's 5.6. A lot of money. Um, we'll probably dwell on goalkeepers enough. There's a lot to consider and there's a lot of sort of nair picks for you to consider over. Um, but I guess the big choice is stay cheap or or just splash out and get Martinez yeah I think that's the more I look at the fixtures and stuff like that Martinez really does jump out at me mm-hmm. uh, and I know he's capable of bonus points as well so I think it will be either Martinez or mm-hmm. or at you know 4.4 4.5 okay um, let's move to defenders as well so just to remind people who is in your wild card so you've got Gabriel Concert um, Gusto uh, Gusto and Alexander Arnold and Porro and in my small list here for defenders, I've just kept it really basic because I know you like to sort of keep keep the game simple, get defenders, you keep clean sheets, that kind of thing. But I've given it a bit of an edge here. These are attacking defenders and it won't come as a huge surprise, the names on this list. Um, I won't say the top name first. Uh, a surprise for those listening on the podcast. Um, but this is over the whole season. Cash is in there. Um, so it proves that over the season, he has got the stats. Obviously, at the moment, he's suspended. No one's going to go for him at the moment. But it is a reminder that he is there. Um, he's had 18 shots inside the box. Um, seven chances created this season. Trippier is the next name on their list. Um, no surprise. 52 chances created. Wowzers. Um, 80 corners. I mean, these are eye-popping stats here. Um Alexander Arnold as well, 47 chances created, 40, uh, 48 corners. Once again, we all know about him, but you've got to pay for this, 8.4. And Pedro Porro, who I've had in my team for a while and absolutely love to own. He's brilliant. Um, so attacking, 15 shots inside the box. That's huge. Uh, 30 chances created, 39 corners. Um, six assists so far. Um, he's doing all the right things there. Trippier's got seven assists. Um, but the top name is a stupid and I've got him in there because we know what he did last season. We know what he did at the beginning of the season, but then got injured. Um, but he has been seen in training again. And if he doesn't slip up again, Brighton don't have any more fullbacks left. They need their fullbacks. And a stupid and was the, the absolute business there uh, in his short time this season. He's had 13 chances. Um, and five shots inside the box, three assists and a goal, goals and assists. And he is top out of all of these players for minutes per expected goal involvement. So he's better in terms of minutes per expected goal involvement uh, uh, than Alexander-Arnold, Trippier and Porro. So he's worth considering there. So looking at all this list here, it's back to basics, attacking defenders, but they cost a lot. But then there are some players emerging like a Stupinam. Yeah, so like I said, I've been on Poro for quite a while. One of the most enjoyable fantasy assets mm-hmm. in the game at the moment. So he obviously stays. I went two weeks ago. I had a decision to make, get a defender for two weeks before the wild card, and it was Trippier or Trent. And I went for Trippier, played the fixtures, when in hindsight, you know, easy to say it now, but maybe should have played the form of the player and the team, etc. Trippier was, you know, coming off quite a few mistakes as well. So maybe didn't give that enough thought. I kind of had tunnel vision, you know, planned it a couple of weeks beforehand. Anyway, it didn't work out. So I, I think that's an easy switch for me. Trippier, Trippier goes now because of the fixtures mm-hmm. and the form and Trent comes in, you know, for the same reasons, but with a positive spin on that. Looking at this as well, is Stupin and I'm quietly hoping that he's at least on the bench midweek, mm. maybe makes an appearance of some kind. And I, if he does, I would be very tempted to just chuck him in, even initially as my fourth defender behind Trent, mm-hmm. Poro and Gabriel, yeah. and just have him there in place. Because I think once he is fit again, people are going to flock to him. Mm. And it'd be nice just to save a transfer and have him yeah. already there. The other thing that that's making me think about is, 
Brighton are top of the fixture ticker, but I don't want their goalkeepers. Mm -hmm. So I could get a stupid in instead of Consa. Yeah. And then that's when I go to Martinez. Mm -hmm. So you know what? And a stupid and Martinez combo to me sounds sounds pretty good. So that's yeah. that's something I'm interested in. Yeah, that that's exactly what I would do. Um yeah, stupid. I I'm a Brighton fan, so I have an inbuilt bias as well. Um, which is why I'm also considering Pascal Gross, who I will uh, mention when we get to midfielders. Um, uh, and I know you've already mentioned there. Um, but yeah, Brighton's just to remind people of their fixtures. They've got West Ham up next. Then they've got Wolves, Luton, Crystal Palace, Tottenham, Sheffield United, Everton. Really good from an attacking point of view. They might actually eke out a clean sheet or two. But with a stupid and he's the kind of player you don't get really necessarily get in for a clean sheet. Um, so yeah, I just thought it good to flag up these sort of back to basics. These are the attacking lads. Um, people have gone off cash, but I'm not, I'm not going to sort of discount him totally. I mean, he's got the stats this season. So, I mean, I can't just ignore him uh, in this list because people say what, well, you know, why isn't he there? Um, but people obviously won't go there. I don't think at the moment. Um, yeah. What, what are your thoughts as well on, uh, I know you're a new owner on Alfie Doughty. He's mm. been, you know, I, I've been looking at the numbers all season and he's been yep. popping up most weeks. What, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on him kind of yep. as a long-term pick? Yeah, he's great. <laughs> no, I do think he's really good. Um, when I did, um, when I've done a, a, a various attacking defenders lists for the last, say, four game weeks or so, um, he's been really high up um, there. And we're talking sort of high up alongside sort of Porro, Alexander-Arnold sort of high up. So he's definitely been in there if you look recently. So he certainly improved, which would indicate Luton improving and he is improving. I think at home, um, he's the kind of player, I think, um, that is good in a combination. So I'm pairing him up with a Crystal Palace defender. I quite like that rotation. So I think if people are like you or others are considering him, I think he's a good as a fourth or fifth defender alongside another good fourth or fifth defender. You don't necessarily want to play every week. But say Luton's fixtures, I mean, I'm benching him in game week 20 and I'm actually quite nervous about that. He's playing Chelsea at home. I think that's quite a good game for him. I think he's, he plays high up as well. They play this sort of wing back system. And he, so he's really high up and playing. And, and I think it was the Arsenal game I saw where obviously they lost. But Alfie Doughty just really stood out. He's a really, really good player. And it's not a case of, you know, too good for Luton. So because I think Luton are quite a good team, actually. Quite a tidy team. They've got good players like Barkley and Townsend, good sort of uh, veterans of, of, of the Premier League. So, yeah, I, I think he is a good option, but he's not a player I think I would play every week. But I certainly would, um, you know, Burnley away, game week 21. Um, Sheffield United at home in game week 24. When, when I said I was going to pick him, someone said, well, you know, I don't like, they didn't like the fixtures. And I was saying, well, don't you like um, fixtures against... Um, three fixtures against other promoted sides um, within the next five, six game weeks. And, and there was no answer. <laughs> so maybe they don't like that, but I certainly did. And, um, and as, as proved, um, he's did all right last week and he's got Burnley game week 21, Sheffield United game week 24 again. So, yeah, yeah I put a, I've kind of just been putting a little watch list of players together, you know, mm. after each of the games this midweek. Uh, and he was certainly added after mm. after that goal. And it's not just the goal. Like I said, he's been, he's yeah. got good numbers all yeah, season. Yeah. He passes the eye test whenever I watch Luton. And, and more so, I'm trying to kind of reevaluate my views on certain teams yeah. since, you know, the first couple of weeks of the season. Because early doors, we thought, right, Luton are going to be the worst Premier League team ever. But, you know, they're starting to win games now and put in some good performances. Barkley in particular has been very good. Townsend's a very sensible addition. So, yeah, Doughty is in my thoughts as a, you know, a fourth defender or maybe a, a, a rotation defender if I end up yeah. going that way. Yeah, definitely. And that's a, another really good sort of bit, kind of overarching point about your wildcard team is, is we're at a stage now where you have to think, well, hang on a minute, Nottingham Forest might actually be a team like Newcastle. They are actually quite good. Um, you have to look at teams like Luton and Sheffield United as well, in a way, you know, Sheffield United can, can frustrate teams now. They've got, a, a, you know, their, their old new manager in. Um, so, um, yeah, I do think, I do think you, you definitely have to do that. And Burnley on their day, I mean, they're uh, a bit of a bogey team for Brighton, but certainly, you know, in Trafford, you know, if Trafford's racking up eight to nine saves every match, that's, that's a big dent on the XG of whoever's they're, they're playing against and if they're an attacking side. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I totally agree there. Um, let's move on to midfielders. 
So um, just remind people again who you've got in your wildcard team. So the big choices there we've spoken about is is the Salah, Son, what to do with them in game week 20 because you're not going to want them game week 20 to 24-ish. Then we've got Saka, Palmer, Odegaard, Richarlison, Bowen. Um, I've got a table of midfielders as well. So um, before I read out, you know, some of these stats and some of these midfielders here, just explain sort of your, your choices. Why have you picked who you've picked? Yeah, so first of all, Saka, Saka just came back in for me about three game weeks back. Uh, hasn't been explosive in recent times, mm-hmm. but I still rate him up there as one of the best FPL midfielders, especially when Son and Salah are not going to be available. Mm-hmm. Richarlison has been doing the business, playing out of position, very mm-hmm. cheap. And it just feels like a a like for, not a like for like, but a kind of a direct replacement for Son while he's mm-hmm. gone. And then you could in, end up just kind of reversing that when, when Son's back, just Tottenham attacker for Tottenham attacker seems sensible. Jared Bowen had him for a large chunk before his injury and haven't been able to get back there yet. I think he's on something like 11 goals for the season, which is mm-hmm. incredible playing for a West Ham team that are not fantastic. He's just such a good player, always seems to pop up in the right position. So I'm quite keen to get back to Bowen and short term, the fixtures are pretty decent there as well. Elsewhere, Palmer, just a gift from FPL this season, not one to overthink. Had him had him for a couple of weeks now. And I think the trap, you know, some people fall into when they activate a wild card, they, they need to make wholesale changes. But I'm trying to make as few changes as possible because the team's been performing well. Mm. It's kind of just changes around the fringes and just kind of, you know, getting these sons and salas out in the in the most easy, sensible fashion as possible. So Palmer definitely stays. Um and then it's a big question is probably is it three five two or three four three? Uh, but probably leaning towards three five two at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, and now I've got some stats up from best midfielders. So some of those players that you've mentioned that are in your team that sound pretty set to to remain in this wild card um, draft right up until deadline. Um, the likes of Bowen, Richarlison are in there. Um, but we've got some other names as well, and I thought I'd put these in there. Quite interesting to c- consider. I think um, so. Top is um, Kevin De Bruyne. Remember him? Um, he only had one start because he got injured. Um, but I sorted this by minutes per expected goal involvement, non-penalty, and he's top. Only very small sample, obviously one match. But it's a timely reminder. He's back in training. He didn't feature in the Club World Cup, but he was in full training there. Um, so that means he's going to be back at some point. That's going to hit Al- Alvarez owners. So uh, where does Alvarez go? You would think um, because he seemed to be sort of taking that De Bruyne role at the moment. Will De Bruyne get back in? (laughs) Will he be eased in uh, gradually? But nevertheless, he is top. He's 10.2. We've all got, we'll we'll all have, and, you know, this is a danger when, you know, with um, content creators, we all say we all. um, But I I think it's safe to say we all won't, we'll ditch Salah and Son or, or at least one of them because it's just too much money to carry for four weeks. Um, De Bruyne, 10.2. I mean, this is the, the time to get De Bruyne if we think he's fit. So they've still got to play a match this week. What? Yeah, De Bruyne, interested? It's going to be fun this week. If, if De Bruyne comes in and starts that game, it's going to, I think it'll send a lot of wild carders into a bit of a tailspin and think, right, now is my opportunity to get him. Uh, and even people who don't have a wild card selling Son and Salah will be will be very, very tempted. But overall, I think I, I'll probably approach De Bruyne very cautiously. Uh, and I'm sure Pep will do the same if he's if he's sensible. Very long layoff. Uh, and I would imagine it'll be eased back in. Uh, and it might not even necessarily mean, you know, starting every game uh, once he's up to full speed as well, especially when, when Europe returns and stuff like that as well. So even though he's tempting and we've got, we're going to have loads of cash available, I don't see myself going there initially, uh, okay. but certainly on the watch list and it's going to be monitored very closely. Okay. Um, you, I mean, currently in your wildcard draft, you've just got Haaland, but Man City have, do have good fixtures and they're a good team <laughs> and they've got a potential double game week coming up very soon. Um, now, I was interviewing uh, Dylan, who is was at that time ninth in the world um, last week, and he recently wildcarded a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things he wanted to do was focus on Man City because of all those reasons I just said. So I think it was Foden at his time there. Um, Grealish was in this list. He just dipped out because he didn't get the number of starts. I know I've included De Bruyne, but that was just to highlight him. Um, but him, and I think I think he just missed out. I think Elise has got five starts in, in here. But Gre- Grealish, um, 
I just thought, you know, might be a rotation risk, which is why you might not go for him. But had you considered Foden, Grealish, Doku? I mean, there's Bernard, Bernardo Silva is another player I quite like. Yeah, I don't, I don't like having just Haaland from City mm. because, like I said, when you simplify FPL, mm. very good team, very good attack. Everybody owns Haaland when he's mm. fit and captains him, so you don't really gain from owning him. It's it's almost just like protecting yourself in a way. Yeah. So to actually gain from the City attack, sometimes you do need to gamble. Mm. Um, you know, and I've kind of been watching from a distance this season, people taking gambles on players like Foden and Doku, and you know, works out sometimes, although on other times it doesn't. But uh, you know, that's a gamble. So when I when I look to finalize my wildcard team. Foden is definitely of interest to me okay. uh, in the in the Odegaard position. Yeah, you know if and even if it was even if I keep Son, you know then maybe Son to Foden, or a Doku or a Bernardo Silva. I'm going to keep all op- options mm. open because I think it would be silly to just strike yeah. any of them out straight away. Obviously, we'll watch Man City midweek, and that will that might help you know form yeah. my opinion. But if if Foden passes the eye test, which which he often does anyway. Mm. Even if he doesn't deliver FPL points, there's a, there's a good chance he'll he'll either be in the wildcard squad or it'll be the transfer instead of Odegaard and give me okay. 21. So I do I would like to get a second piece of the Manchester City attack. I don't see myself going defensively because Trent, Poro, Gabriel. I don't think you need to. No. Maybe Ederson, but again, do you want to pay for that when they're not keeping clean sheets? I don't think so. So it's probably a maximum of two, and it's it's probably two attackers. Um, just to remind people of those fixtures, they've got Sheffield United up next game week 20 um, and uh, then Newcastle aw- um, away, then Burnley at home, Brentford away, Everton at home, Chelsea at home, Bournemouth away. I mean, these are all pretty much all of them, especially with Newcastle's form at the moment. I would have said that was a t- the tough one, but I can see a lot of goals in, in those if we think City are going to improve as well. Um, so, yeah, I-, I-, I join you there in that when Salah and Song go for me, um, Bowen is a player I really like. I just it, it probably similar to me. It's it's nice to own. You just feel happy with certain players. Poro is just a fun player to own. Bowen is a great player to own. Just chips away, steady Eddie, goal or assist, return every week. That's exactly what you want. So Bowen and probably Foden, or if another Man City midfielder like De Bruyne sort of puts their head above yeah. the parapet. Um, just on the city attack as well i've you know i've been on alvarez for a long time Mm. and very early doors maybe give me five or give me six in it it was okay for a while but you know long term hasn't really delivered what i expected so it's going to be interesting to see how the haaland situation plays out because Mm. if if the information is a bit sketchy you know if he doesn't play game week 19 then there's again another difficult decision for wildcarders. Do you do you go with Alvarez? You know, do you is he your Haaland placeholder or do you avoid Alvarez altogether? Um, so it's tricky. You know, I I don't really want to keep Alvarez because no. he hasn't been great for me. But if if there was a scenario where Haaland was going to miss a few more games, then you look at the fixtures. You think, you know what? Maybe I just keep him a little bit longer. So yeah. um, it's almost like he hasn't been great for me. So I want the shiny new toy, which is Foden instead. But Alvarez could could still be a decent option yeah. if Hallett misses a few more games. So Man City again is another little tricky one, okay. um, depending on information this week. Okay. I mean, and next on this list, the three players that we've already mentioned, they're in your list. I'll just read out the stats though, because they back up what you were saying. So Richarlison's next. Uh, five goals, ten starts. Start obviously he's going to be starting much more regularly now. Already has been. Um, um, he's had his minutes per expected goal involvement non-penalty every 155 minutes um, he's had three assists as well seven chances Bowen 11 goals as you said earlier he started 17 matches I think it was I can't remember what the reason was he was uh, it was just an injury I think uh, but he he is absolutely nailed on um, he's playing up front as well he's had an assist minutes per expected goal involvement non-penalty every 168 minutes and he's on over 100 points 102 points 11 chances created and Palmer as well as you said he's a gift 11 starts so pretty much starting most of the matches he's playing if he's not suspended that is uh, this week um six goals on penalties we still think he's on penalties had four assists he's just chipping away at returns I've only had him in my team for about three weeks and already already within that time he got a 14 point hole haul in one of those weeks so absolutely delighted to own him um so we've already spoken about them it's obvious why they're in your team here's some more names though next on the list is Neto at Wolves um he's got 52 points had 10 starts but being injured 
but he's had eight assists, which is the most on this list. And if we think, you know, defenders, clean sheets, midfielders, um, assists, strikers, forwards, goals. Um, Neto's exactly doing what you want. And Wolves' fixtures are good. Everton, Brighton, Manchester United, Chelsea, Brentford, Tottenham, Sheffield United, right up to 26. Um, he could be back. Um, if if you see him back this week, are you tempted by Neto? Yeah. And and to be honest, he's kind of the forgotten man. Yeah. Um, not on my watch list because he's just been injured for, for ages. But, you know, you think back to the start of the season, he was incredible. He was playing the yeah. best football of his career. Um obviously Huang kind of took up the mantle then while he was gone, but he'll he'll head off to the to to the cup competitions as well. Neto, you know, possibly penalties then, possibly when Huang's away as well. So yeah, I will be and, and you know what, overall I've been very impressed with Gary O'Neill at Wolves this season. Uh, mm-hmm. another good result for them for yeah. them recently as well. So Neto again an option, but like De Bruyne, cautious, pretty long layoff. Probably won't jump in. It's all. It's one of those where I don't think you need to be the first owner. Get him back. Let him prove his fitness. Make sure there's no setbacks, and then maybe jump in. Yeah, um, just one below him on the list is probably more interesting to me is Eze, mm, because I, I bought Eze a couple of weeks ago. I bought him the game just before he got injured, so I got about thirty-five minutes out of him. But I'm a big, big Eze fan. Always passes the eye test. The fixtures maybe are not great for Crystal Palace, which is the issue. And the other thing I don't like is Olise took a penalty with mm-hmm. Eze on the pitch recently. So that was a big factor for me that, you know, I really liked Eze for the penalties as yeah. well. So that probably dilutes his potential a bit and obviously makes Olise a little bit better if he's going to take them or, yeah. or they could be shared. I think both Eze and Olise, and you can throw Neto in as well in a, a similar bracket, all good differentials that... I wouldn't probably stop anybody from buying. Maybe just be a bit cautious with Neto on the fitness side of things. But it comes back to it. I always ask myself, are they in the top five midfielders in the game? I don't think so. And that's why they probably won't make the final cut. But they are in the top eight. (laughs) Because they're they're, they're there or thereabouts. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, they're they're there or thereabouts, but Palmer definitely has it. So yeah, I'm I'm similar. If I, I play by price points and things, Broadly, Eze and Elise are broadly the same, similar price to Palmer. If Palmer gets a long-term injury, I've got one. Of, well, I've got a choice there. Neto, Eze and Elise, all great options there. I'll just read out their stats because they do make this list. Eze is sixth on this list. Um, he's had a couple of goals, nine starts. Obviously, injuries could tell that. He's had a couple of assists as well. Minutes per expected goal involvement. Non-penalty every 180 minutes. Um, so the goal involvement every other game. At least say broadly similar on the minutes per expected goal involvement. Non-penalty. Couple of goals um, and an assist across his five starts. So they're both good options there. And Crystal Palace's fixture is not too bad, actually. Brentford at home. Um, Arsenal. And then Sheffield United at home. Brighton away, so you know, never know what's going to happen with the Brighton game. Um, and Chelsea, Everton, and Burnley, they're not actually too bad. Um, which is, and th- I mean, you can if you're if you're going for sort of eight attackers, you can bench a, pa- a Palace player, but yes, yeah, I, I, I think it's sort of dependent on Palmer, I would imagine. He's p- sort of got their space at the moment. Um, next, yeah, as long as he's fine, as long yeah. as he's fine, there's no yeah. issue. And, and you know, I'm going to sell Gordon, but I, I still think he's up there, maybe ahead of Elise okay. and those kind of guys as well. Um, next name, uh, J- Diogo Jota. Um, a back with a goal um, this week in game week 19. Um, Salah is off. Um, Darwin Nunez, Gakpo, Diaz and Jota. So still four into three places there. So there still will be rotation. But he showed that he has still got it. Um, 7.7 million. He's very, very low owned, um, understandably. But he's had five goals across his eight starts and a couple of assists. Um, I think he's a really good option. I think Salah's um, Salah's just going for for, for January means that it's just one extra body, (laughs) just lack of numbers. So his his expected minutes go up slightly. Are you tempted by Jota? I mean, I I certainly am. He's certainly on my radar as a replacement for Salah and Son. Yeah, good to see him on the score sheet again. Um, But I think it's been the case all season for me when it comes to Liverpool attack. When, when it is four into three or five into three, which it has been for a while, straight away, it's just like, no thanks. I'll just go somewhere else where I can get 90 minutes, possibly. Um, Jota is probably one of the few players, though, that 
if he gets 20 minutes from me, I'm quite confident that he could actually do something. He's a very impactful player, has been, you know, his whole career. He's quite explosive from the bench and stuff like that. So he's, I, I will give it some thought, but probably more so maybe in a couple of weeks' time when Salah's actually gone yeah. and, and seeing if Jota is getting increased minutes in, which which he probably will. I still think he's probably competing with with the others more so than Salah mm. um, for maybe a central striking yeah. position. Yeah. So for me at the moment, it's just a wait and see. And it, it goes the same goes for the other Liverpool attackers. I you know, I'm I'm selling I'm gonna sell Son probably for mm. a Richarlison, but I don't see myself going from Salah to another Liverpool attacker okay. just because of the the rotation concerns. I'll just get Trent in yeah. and that will that will probably be it. Yeah, definitely. Um it meant you mentioned Gordon as well here. Um he's, he's very similar to all of those other players around that price range that we spoke about. Uh, there. I'll just read out his stats though. He's obviously started 17. I mean, he's like a dingram for Brighton in that he just does not get rested. Even if he's injured, his legs have fallen off, somehow magically he appears on the pitch again and everyone wonders how is he starting. Um, so he's got six goals, 92 FPL points. He's turning into a pretty good FPL asset. Um, really, uh, which has surprised a lot of people. 17 starts, six assists. Um, but yeah, it's the fixtures. Liverpool, Man City up next. Then they got Aston Villa. Gets better for Luton. Uh, they got Luton at home and then Nottingham Forest. Well, <laughs> I say Nottingham Forest is a good fixture. He blanks and they uh, beat them, beat them well. And then Bournemouth and then Arsenal. So patchy, patchy. These are okay fixtures. But yeah, it's the fixtures. You've got better, better be- players with better fixtures and there's a lot in that price range. Yeah, I think give me 20 wild carders like me if you've been on Gordon for a while. It feels like an easy one just to jump off and then maybe five, six game weeks time go yeah. back to him when, when the fixtures improve. So pretty sure, pretty sure he's gone, yeah. Okay. Um, last name on this list, because um, you're a Manchester United fan. Um, now, I'm not a Manchester United fan, um, obviously, I'm a Brighton fan. But, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily want them to do badly. As an FPL manager, I want a, a Manchester United. I want to sort of... I want to pick, you know, Ryan Giggs and Beckham. And, you know, I want to have those types of amazing players. Ronaldo was the, the one, Rooney, when I first started playing this game. And it was it was an absolute pleasure to get two players getting hat-tricks almost every week in your FPL team. Which do I captain? Um, uh, Fernandez. I'm not saying he's on a par with that. But Manchester United had some fight in them. They've got a new ownership, well partly new owner, um, but certainly some, hopefully, some sporting expertise. They certainly haven't had too much footballing expertise recently. Um, things could be on the up there. Garnacho, you mentioned 4.7 could be a great option. Fernandez 8.2 on penalties still. 18, 18 starts. He's the glue guy it, there. But three assists, three goals. Um, he's underperformed by at least four expected goal involvements um, so far this season. Um, I would imagine as a Manchester United fan, watching brief there. Yeah, certainly a watching. I think with Bruno, eight point two. Uh, I think I'm still scarred by game week one having Rashford and Bruno, as a lot of people did. I'm going to be. It's going to take a lot for me to go back to Bruno. Mm. I think again, the other midfielders that we've mentioned, even the ones on this okay. list, plenty of better midfielders in yep. FPL and Bruno at the moment. And I, I think the Bruno factor is. You've got to mention Garnacho because if you can get a 4.7 million Manchester United attacker who's probably been our best attacker in recent mm-hmm. times, you know, had a goal ruled out in that game as well. So yeah. it could have been a hat trick at 4.7. That is where you're going to go instead of 8.2. You get a Garnacho 4.7 who's pretty nailed at the moment, you know, keeping Rashford out of the team, uh, rightly so, given his performances. So, yeah, I don't think too many people will touch Bruno when yeah. you can get Garnacho at four point oh. seven, and I think Garnacho will be a popular pick this week yeah. now because of his, you know, the recency bias. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll just put, put your wildcard team back on the screen at the moment, just to remind myself who your attackers are. So you've got Ollie Watkins, Harland, and Chris Wood. So uh, why those three? And as you're talking, I'll put some uh, stats on forwards, and we can pick apart some of those names as well. And some of those might already be on this list. But yeah, what's your rationale, Watkins, Wood and Haaland? Yeah, so Watkins, first of all, has been there since game week one and obviously having a very, very good season. And and to me, could still be a 38 game week pick. You know, you plug him in at the start of the season, you leave him there all year. 
and he off you know returns really good value. I know recently it, it might be something like four blanks in the last five. I think I read somewhere, but that doesn't concern me too much. I'm looking at the bigger picture. Villa are great mm-hmm. near the top of the fixture ticker. Short time fi- fixtures are really good as well. So I don't really see myself losing Watkins. And there's there's nobody really in the striker position okay. screaming out you know buy me instead of Watkins at the moment. And then yeah. you've got Haaland's the obvious one to come back in when he's fit for the captaincy most weeks. And then if I go three five two, it's probably a question of Chris Wood or Archer. Okay. And again, Sheffield United have improved. Archer's numbers have improved as well. So I probably would just save myself zero point three there and go go Archer because it's it's not very often I would need them anyway from the bench. Mm. There might even be a second sub rather than a first sub. So again, just thinking ahead, how do I get Sal and Son back? Will I need 0.3? Possibly. Yeah. So maybe go Archer instead of Chris Wood. But but Chris Wood certainly put his hand up in recent times, scoring a lot of goals. A one he's injured. Um, yeah, just a, he's always been a kind of a, an effective Premier League striker. Knows where the goal is and, you know, could just be a good pick under Nuno for a couple of weeks, at least until the one he's back. And even after that, if he keeps scoring goals, he's probably going to stay in the team. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. If it was a if it was a three four three, maybe maybe Solanke stays regardless yeah. of fixtures. Mm-hmm. Um, that will be probably a big question. Does Solanke stay or does he become a fifth midfielder instead? Yeah, I think. I mean, yeah, you hit the nail on the head with that. It's, it's either three five two or three four three. Um, I'm in the three four three camp. <laughs> so just as you end your three four three all season that's done you well, I'm moving to. Th- I've well, I moved the last couple of weeks to three four three. Um, so I've got a Harland, Solanke, and Watkins in place. Watkins and Harland, obvious reasons. And Solanke, just it's just on form. I just think with strikers, um, one of the best metrics for strikers is did they score last week? And I know some some people say, oh, you're getting last week's points, but strikers are different. Strikers are all about the confidence and shooting with the goal, and you know it's it's you know the thing that goes from their their brain to their foot and scoring those goals, and you know you just want to keep that going, and they often do it. And I remember, you know, times before getting I don't know Darren Bent when he was at Sunderland. Do you remember? Didn't, if you're respective of the team, you just get these players that just score almost every other week. Um, and you just want that for a striker. Um, six points, very happy. I'm happy with six points every week. He can keep keep that going if he wants. And I don't think the fixture too bad. They're bottom of the fixture ticker. Um, but I do think from an attacking point of view, Tottenham is not a bad fixture for him. Tottenham away in game at 20. Game at 21 is Liverpool at home. Well, Liverpool defence, it, it, it's a question of Alisson v Solanke. And then you've got West Ham, Nottingham Forest and Fulham. Great for him, I think. Newcastle, well, Newcastle may improve by then, but maybe not. And then Man City, uh, who also suspect always concede, conceding a goal. So I don't think he's going to haul in those last two, but um, could do what. So I think he's, for 3-4-3, three, three, I think he is still the the best option. But for your point of view, 3-5-2, yeah, I'm a big fan of Chris Wood. Everyone on Twitter knows that. I always, every time he scores or something, I put a picture of me and Kasten Wood uh, there. So, so <laughs> see my adoration for Chris Wood. He's, he's been in, I think he's been quietly over the last decade or so, been one of, if not, yeah, in the top four or five performing strikers. Um, he's certainly got the pedigree. I think I remember reading somewhere recently that he might be only second to Harry Kane for headed Premier League goals or something yeah. like that. He's, he's, he's up there in, in a lot of metrics, you know, yeah. as you said, probably a very underrated player, mm-hmm. um, to be fair. Um, thinking about it a bit more with Solanke, it, it's, it feels like one of those where I would only be selling them because I'm wildcarding. Mm. If I wasn't wildcarding, I probably wouldn't even be thinking about selling them because I'd be focusing on my midfield yeah. picks with Son and Salah, mm. etc. So maybe that's with that kind of viewpoint, he maybe shouldn't be a, a you know consideration for sale because he's playing so well. Like I said, maybe the fixtures are not as bad as they look on paper. Yes, bottom of the fixture ticker, but if you take if you get through the next two games, even if he doesn't do a huge amount, you're looking at a very nice run of fixtures there. So yeah. there's every chance Solanke might actually survive, and that would mean just sticking with the three four three that I've been been yeah. on basically all season. And so would that involve, say, Garnacho, for example, as your four point seven? 
Yeah, because the one I've kind of been looking at recently is uh, McAtee at 4.4 oh, okay. uh, at Sheffield United. But I don't think he can, he's not available against Man City uh, in the next fixture. And I just think if you can spend zero, an extra 0. 0.3, uh, get a Manchester United attacker yeah. who's capable of braces or hat tricks, then that's the one you go for, even if it's, a, if, if it's a bench pick. So, yeah, I think at the moment I prefer 3 4 3 with Garnacho than I do 3 5 2 with okay. an Archer or, okay. uh, or a Chris Wood. Okay. I mean, my, my only problem with that is it's a good problem it's too good um you've got a bench um garnacho or chris wood every week or most weeks uh, and if you don't bench them you've got to take out odegaard or you know whatever another really good player if i personally i don't own chris wood at the moment i don't own garnacho i've got dingra and i'm playing more or less every week because he's an attacking player and attacking side um but if I didn't, <laughs> if, if you're me, Joe, and if you had a bench all season of marvelous Nakamba, <laughs> Jordan Byer, and an injured Malo Gusto, you'd just be happy to have anything on the bench. So oh, uh, yeah. it'll just be one of those of you know making peace with that. There's I've had no points on my bench all season, which has wow. been you know, takes That's the frustration good. out of the game. But it's going. It'll be going back to traditional having a good first sub. Mm. Sometimes there'll be ten pointers there, but. You just don't stress too much about that. It's hopefully you, you get them when you need them. Yeah, and I suppose having a really good first sub. I mean, because Chris Wood and Galacho are elite first subs. Um, so for, for, for the lowly people like me, they're they're actually in my team. <laughs> they're not on the subs bench. Um, but um, I think having that as well, it saves you that down the line. So say you game it twenty one, game twenty two comes along, you've got Odegaard in your side. Odegaard injured. Um, but it's not a bad injury. It's just a week. You can just pop him. Roll your bench. transfer. Just roll yeah. that transfer. You don't have to move him out. Whereas if you if you if you if you're down to your marvelous Decambers and your and your Bayers and things like that, then yeah, you probably would be tempted to make that move. So yeah, there is that other benefit. That. And I I I'm, I don't mind bench points as well because I I look at that and go, well, they're in my team. They they're going up in price. I, I can... I've been uh, I've been playing eleven player FPL all season. I'm looking back to going back to fifteen player FPL. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is good, yeah. But I mean, yeah. What what a what a what a criticism to have. That's too good, <laughs> mm. uh, and it is. It's, it, that's and that's what you want in a wild card. The wild card needs to be too good. Um, okay, we've. Um, I'll, I'll go through some of these other names before we go. Um, these are some other names on the forwards to consider. So Harland, we all know about. He's top for minutes per expected goal involvement on penalty. Fourteen goals across his fifteen starts. Absolute elite among elite. And then you've got Isaac at, uh, with his eight goals across his 11 starts for, for Newcastle. But we've already talked, spoken about the Newcastle fixtures. Also, Wilson is on this list as well. So Isaac and Wilson will get rotated, although Isaac is favoured, you would imagine. You've got Jackson for Chelsea. I think Jackson is off, though, for in, in AFCON, I think. Um, and he's got seven goals across his 14 starts. Much maligned at the beginning, but seven goals for 6.9 Million striker, not bad, I don't think. Um, Darwin Nunes, um, people will be happy with his goal, but I've owned him for about two or three weeks, got rid of him now. He's not the player I've enjoyed owning as well. And and then you've got Calvert, and you've got uh, Neil Mapay at Brentford. Ivan Tony is coming back. Will Ivan Tony remain at Brentford? And then you've got Calvert Lewin as another um, um, uh, option there. And Jay Zeus, uh, with his, across his 10 starts, had three goals. And two assists. So out of all of those there, I've got a couple of questions. Any of those names appeal, but it, having Neil Mapay there brings to mind Tony. Now, if Tony is back for Brentford or goes to Arsenal and emerges, or, or another team and emerges as their top striker, you're going to want him in. So you're probably going to want three, four, three, three strikers up front. Um, so there's an, uh, something to consider there, Tony's return, but also some of the, all those other names I mentioned as well in consideration. Yeah, to I was looking at Tony last night. He's he's actually more expensive than we would like. I think mm. he's 7.9. You know, it's one of those when he's been out for so long, you kind of would have hoped mm. that he would have just dropped and dropped and yeah. dropped, but obviously it wasn't the case with, with nobody selling them. So um, don't have too much interest in, in Tony. Uh, you know, I'm not going to plan for him until he's actually mm. back. Um Looking at the list, Isak and Wilson don't like that because they share minutes. Darwin, rotation risk. Neil mm. Mopai, not keen there either when you can get Chris Wood for the same price or yeah. even an archer. Calvert-Lewin, fitness concerns always. There's just 
narrows it down to the usual suspects, yeah. Haaland, Solanke, Watkins. One player not on the list, mm. very tempting for wild carders, is Christopher Nkunku at Chelsea. Yes. You know, it's um it's you know, on the score sheet straight away, you know, good header. We know how good he is from his, you know, previous previous club. So Slight temptation there, but you know, can you justify getting Nkunku over a Watkins or a Solanke on, on current you know season information? I don't think you can, but maybe maybe if you're chasing a bit more or you're you know you're down your mini leagues, maybe that's an opportunity that you could jump on. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't work out, you could always go back to those other, you know, more more steady eddies. But um I will I will be giving Nkunku some thought this week. Um, but the kind of manager I am, I, I probably won't end up going there. I think I'm more likely to keep Slanky than I am to get uh, in Kunku. Okay. Um, just a reminder of his fixtures. He's got Luton up next game at 20, and then Fulham, and then Liverpool, Wolves, Crystal Palace, Man City, and Tottenham. So mixed bag, but some some good fixtures in there. Um, Jackson will be absent as well. So and Kunku. It remains to be seen exactly where he'll be playing in the team as well. Could be playing up front, could be playing uh, an attacking midfield role or, or out on the wing. But nevertheless, um, yeah, you would think he would certainly get more minutes and could be a great option. If he if he scores again, then yeah, you're right. Um, I think he'd be very popular. Yeah. The, the thing market. about Chelsea is, you know, I've already got Palmer and and I watched I, mo- I watched the most recent Chelsea game. Was it Wolves that beat them? It's mm. To me, he just still looks like a dysfunctional team. It looks like a yeah. bunch of guys who are just thrown together in the park on a Sunday and they don't yeah. really know exactly yet what they're supposed to be doing. So that puts me off a double up in attack. I'm, I'm happy with Palmer, but mm. I'm quite reluctant to get a second one just, just yet. Yeah, no, I, I echo those views too. Um, a bit like Manchester United as well. They haven't sort of, Chelsea have sort of emerged with new owners and they're not quite, it doesn't quite work at the moment. Manchester United, you know, for a number of years, it hasn't sort of worked on, on the recruitment but yeah, you're, we're waiting for them to sort of gel in a sort of Brentford, Brighton, and of course Newcastle way as well. I think Newcastle are a very good team as the, as uh, at the moment. Um, or rather, you know, I say that as they you know lose their bad form at the moment. But overall, this season, it's it's an impressive team that play as a team. Um, okay, just before we go, I'll just put your wild cards um, draft back up on the screen. Um, so just to remind people, you've gone for Pickford and Dubravka. This is a, a draft, by the way. Um, a Gabriel, Conser, Gusto, Alexander-Arnold, Porro, Saka, Palmer, Odegaard, Richarlison and Bowen in midfield. And up front, you've got Chris Wood uh, with a couple of other lads, uh, Ollie Watkins and Erling Haaland. Obviously not as good as Chris Wood, but, you know, they'll do. Um, um, just after we've been chatting, we've been gone through some stats. You've had a chance to have a good old, good hour chatting to someone about it. Um, what's your sort of immediate thoughts from this um, this draft? What What do you think of the, the, the highly likely changes? Yeah, th- you know, thanks for your time as well, Joe. It's been really good to chat to you about and, you know, wildcard ideas and just plant some new seeds. So I think if I was to go and play with this again now after the video, it would probably be Martinez and goal maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Conta would come out maybe for an Estupin in or, or something like that. Son goes back in for Odegaard or, mm-hmm. or just stays in there. He's, he yeah. is still there behind the scenes. He's just he's just hiding at the moment. Yeah. And then it's probably it's probably Solanke again in a 3-4-3. Three, three. Mm-hmm. And then maybe Garnacho as your fifth midfielder. Yeah, so uh, need to kind of yeah. move that around a wee bit. So yeah, that's there's a lot of there's a lot of big decisions to be made this week, and I'm sure with a few more games to go, a few spanners will be thrown in with yeah. with injuries or suspensions or whatever. So um, Douglas, I do like Douglas Louise as well. I would like to fit him in if I could, but again, probably not going to happen with the other options that we mentioned. Okay, yeah, no, plenty to think about there, and there's those sort of overall points: three, four, three, three, five, two. That's what other wild carders will be thinking, and and you know those of us who haven't got a wild card to compete with. But yeah, a lot of the basics are there though. You Alexander Arnold's Ped. Porro, Gabriel, um, Richarlison, Saka, Haaland, Watkins. These are the sort of players I would imagine would be anyone else wildcarding. They would have them in their side uh, as well. But yeah, some of those other players and what to do with um, Son and Salah as well will be coming into consideration. And will Haaland be fit? Um, as, by the time you're watching this, we may know that. Um, currently, me and Mark don't. We're in the dark uh, there. Um, hey, good luck with the wildcards and good luck with the rest of the season. Um, Cheers, Joe. It's... Um... It's funny. I, I always, I, I've said it many times before. I'm very, I'm fearful of wild cards, and it's probably why I haven't played it until the last minute. And when things are going well, I don't like upheaval and change and and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm hoping I can just keep it simple, 
and uh, keep keep the steady run of, of Green Arrows going. Yeah, no, I think I think you will. I mean, it's a good time to. I think it's a good time for you to play it because it's from a position of strength. You're making a good team better rather than oh my god, I've got twenty. Well, not twenty. I've got fifteen flags. What do I do? I haven't got any players left, and 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 panicking at the last minute. So it's quite you know it's it's considered. Um, but yeah, good luck with it. Um, and um, you, uh, we'll see you again next week for some more more general sort of more a more sort of normal generals orders. I don't think it will be next week. Actually, we'll we'll see. We'll chat about chat about it, but we'll find out when because game week twenty one deadline is middle of January. But at some point ahead of that, obviously, we'll be back discuss that um and do remember to press that like button and do remember to subscribe as well keep updated with our uh, all our videos and podcasts and also remember go to fantasyfootballscout.co.uk for those members offers as well so you can have a look at those stats yourself in great detail um thanks for your time mark take care see you soon